In this video, we're going to learn about direct recursion versus indirect recursion in C. So direct recursion and indirect recursion are two different types of recursion. Direct recursion occurs when we have a function that calls itself. Indirect recursion occurs when we have functions which call each other and depend on each other to solve a problem. Sometimes indirect recursion is called mutual recursion. Let's go over an example of each type of recursion. So for an example of direct recursion, let's create a function that finds the sum of the integers between a positive integer n and one. So for example, if n is four, the sum of the integers between four and one would be four plus three plus two plus one is equal to 10. We'll call the function sum integers and the function will return an int. So we'll have int for the return type and the function will accept n as an argument. So we'll have a parameter here, int n. And then we'll supply a definition of the function down here. And what we'll do is have a base case. If n is equal to one, then we're going to return one. And the recursive case is going to be return n plus some integers when it's called with n minus one. And we're going to assume the function is called with a positive integer. So if we imagine the function is called with four, we're going to have four plus some integers when it's called with three, because we'll have that n is not one. So we're going to return four plus some integers when it's called with four minus one, which is three. Now some integers when it's called with three is going to return three plus some integers when it's called with n minus one, which is going to be two. So this is going to be three plus some integers when it's called with two. And the same thing is going to happen again. We're going to return two plus some integers when it's called with one. So this will be two plus some integers when it's called with one. Now at this point, we hit the base case where n is equal to one and the function will just return one. So we'll have four plus three plus two plus one is equal to 10 which is the correct answer. We could test this code out. Up here, we could have int sum is equal to some integers when it's called with four. We could then output the sum. So we could have printf sum colon percent d backslash n and then sum. And if we save compile and run the program, we're going to get a sum of 10, which is correct. Now this is an example of direct recursion because the function is calling itself some integers calls some integers to solve the problem. That's the most common type of recursion is direct recursion. Indirect recursion is when we have functions which call each other to solve a problem. So for example, let's say that we want to output a countdown of all the integers between a positive integer n and one. And as we output each integer, we also want to output whether that integer is even or odd. So for example, if n was 10, we would have 10 even, followed by nine odd, followed by eight even, followed by seven odd, all the way down to one, which is going to be odd. We could use an indirect recursion solution to this problem. We'll actually have three functions. So up here, we'll create the function declarations. First, we'll have void countdown, and the function has a void return type because the function is not going to actually return any value. It's just going to output values and the function will accept the integer n as an argument. So we'll have a parameter here, int n. So this function is going to start off the countdown by calling either print even or print odd. From there, those two functions are going to use indirect recursion to open the countdown. So we'll have void and then print even which is also going to accept an int as an argument. So we'll have int n and then void print odd, which is also going to accept an int as an argument. So we'll have int n. We can then supply a definition of these functions. So we'll copy these and paste them down here. So what countdown is going to do is call either print even or print odd first, depending on whether n is an even or odd number. So if we divide n by two and we get a remainder of zero, that means n is an even number. The modulus operator will give us the remainder of a division operation. So if n modulus two 
is equal to zero, then we know n is even. And in that case, we're going to call the print even function with n. Otherwise, if n is odd, then we're going to call the print odd function with n. Now print even and print odd are going to keep calling each other to open the countdown. So for print even, we'll have if n is greater than or equal to one, then we want to keep going. And what we'll do is output the value of n with dash even afterwards, followed by a new line. So here we'll have n to output the value n. Then we'll call print odd. And we'll call print odd with n minus one. Now we can implement print odd, and it's going to look pretty similar. So we'll have here, if n is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to keep the recursion going. And what we'll do is output the value of n followed by dash odd and a new line. So here we'll have n to output the value of n. And this time we'll call print even with n minus one. So if print even is initially called by the countdown function, then n is even. And we'll call print odd with n minus one, which is going to be an odd number. If print odd is called initially by the countdown function, n is going to be odd. And we'll call print even with n minus one, which is going to be an even number. So regardless of how the countdown function begins the recursion, print even will keep being called with even numbers and print odd will keep being called with odd numbers. And eventually recursion is going to stop when n is no longer greater than or equal to one. We can now test out these functions. So up here in main, we'll call countdown. We'll call countdown with let's say 10. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we get this countdown here with 10 even, nine odd, eight even, seven odd, all the way down to one odd. And the two functions are working together recursively to produce a solution where print even calls print odd and vice versa. And this is an example of indirect recursion. And again, here we've assumed these functions, including countdown, are being called initially with a positive integer n. Now in general, recursion is not used very often to solve practical problems, and indirect recursion is used even less. It could potentially make our code more difficult to understand, but you do see indirect recursion come up sometimes when working with tree data structures. So perhaps with tree data structures that represent an expression that could be made up of different possible operations, a group of functions using indirect recursion can process the expression with different functions handling each operation. A more specific example of this type of situation would be a recursive descent parser. I'll post the link in the video description to this concept. So this is the difference between direct recursion and indirect recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.